mij energie inbring. <laughs> Johan, welkom. Welkom to the special episode of Waypoint Connect. We, we had a chat over Zoom. And yeah, that was great. that chat, we decided, no, we need to speak in person. Yeah. And I'm so glad to be here. It's really nice meeting all of you and your setup and everything that you guys have. It's so great and it's fun and it's lively and it's so welcoming. Yeah, so yeah. thanks a lot for being here. I also want to thank our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Krakakama B&B. They're located in Sunridge in PE. They've been operating since 2008. It's a small guest, room, a guest house with four rooms with their own ensuite bathroom, secure off-street parking. They've welcomed guests from around the world, locally, people for pleasure and for business. And Krakakama B&B is privileged to offer quiet, peaceful surroundings, great beds. They offer a generous farmhouse breakfast and they also offer dinner, and I love this, on request and packed lunches for those individuals who don't have time to go out and buy or prepare their own meals. So perfect for somebody that's on the go, ready for business, need that backup from, from the accommodation. And they would love to welcome you your friends and colleagues to Krakakama B&B and, and they'll definitely take good care of you. Awesome, thank you very much. I'll be going then. <laughs> <laughs> Our next um, sponsor is the Hello Craft Range. Hello Craft Range is a local business in P that's been making breakfast foods, muesli. They're well known for the muesli. Yes, we just started with Krakakama. This is getting so much better. <laughs> I will see you guys very soon. That was great, thanks. <laughs> So, their products you'll find in your local spa, even in Gauteng. Ah, From okay. Bloemfontein to Priska. Yeah, I'll so drive there around there. Thank you very there. much, guys. And they got exceptional quality products at exceptional prices. Oats is their main ingredient for their breakfast. Oh, I don't need oats, sorry. Breakfast is the sorry, most guys. important meal of the day. And have a, a look out for the Hello Craft range in your local deli. You need to check it. These uh, guys sound amazing. Okay, leave a comment where are you going today to get those craft range right now. So talking about leaving a comment, the Devil's going to be managing our online connection. The idea is that, that it's an interactive conversation. So the Devil's there to in interact with, with people online, so feel free to leave a comment. Hello, Devil. <laughs> Johan, our topic for this afternoon is friends. Friends. <coughs> That is a conversation that can go on for ages, but I promise we'll keep it short and sweet. The thing about friends, I think let's just start off how great they are mm. to have proper people in your life taking a journey with you in every sense of the way. Um, let, let's start off with, I grew up in Bloemfontein actually, and um, I have a friend there, his name is Rikus, and that dude has been my friend since I was, I think, almost a baby, three or four years old. I remember photo albums in uh, in it where we were literally <laughs> little toddlers basically being together and I will always remember him as my best friend in Bloemfontein mm. and all the other guys as well we had a gang called Alley Cats until I was grade five Achterstraatse <laughs> Katten it was the, the best ever and those friends I will always, always cherish the the goodness that they brought to my life the adventures the the cascara that we build and crashing it, all the bicycle rides and all the fun, the tok toki moments yeah. that we had. So thinking about what you're yeah. saying is, and thinking back to, to myself growing up and the mischief we got into, what I just realized is I never really got into mischief by myself. <laughs> it was always with friends. <laughs> it's <wasn't> always <laughs> friends. <laughs> it is definitely <laughs> always friends. Now we live at a place of Bloemfontein uh, and it's called the Freistadt Nassau Centrum. And they had a really lovely um, working um, bench thing at the bottom of the farm and me and my one friend decided to actually crawl into it if I can remember right it wasn't my doing it was mm. a group decision <laughs> and we decided to take the cement inside that um, work hall and threw that powder everywhere that it's white 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 and the reason why we did it is that a movie from Ace Ventura Pet Detective where he dusted in the hut and oh, everything yes, was white. And the we were trying to find <laughs> fingerprints <laughs> with cement. It was great. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't find any fingerprints. It was our fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> so, guess who got into a very big trouble? <laughs> it was me. It wasn't them. It was me because was I lived there. Yeah. 
So that, that's kind of what, what we're talking about is, is on the one hand, friends are important because we saw in during lockdown mm. how important relationships really were. Yeah. And for helping you stay on an even keel, mm. being connected to other people is so important. Yeah. But there's a there's a, there's a other side of the coin that comes with it. Mm. There's the impact and the effect that friends have yeah. on your life. For you personally, how has that played out? It's been ups and downs for every person that watches at this moment. If you have been traveling, like moving around in your life, we moved a lot when I lived in Bluefontein, and then we moved to Cape Town, uh, and it was at a crucial stat, I think it was grade five. Um, you're actually forming everything that you want at that stage. So when I started a new school, and my mom always told me, I need to remember, I was very sad at the beginning. I, I can't remember it so well, but the more I think about it, the more I can actually remember the times I didn't want to be there. I wanted to go back to the friends that I had. Yeah. But those friends today are my best friends. They are still, uh, they are my longest friends that I have at this moment. And I want to start off with a verse in the Bible. It's, it's Proverbs 13, verse 20, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I want to set it off for this whole conversation going forward that each and every one of you need to remember that. When you're young, when you're older, when you're in your 50s, I think it, it's still something that you live by every single day. When you're making business, business decisions, when you're busy studying, when you're working as a waiter, it doesn't matter where you are, you can remember this. Proverbs 13, verse 20, and it says this, Walk with the wise and become wise. And I actually want to say something, but I'm going to stop there right now. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. But anyway, and a companion of fools suffers harm. A companion of fools suffers harm. So before we get to the good part, that's to walk with the wise, to become wise. Let's start off with the companion of fools suffers harm. I, I, I think uh, that's thrown in there because you yeah. don't want to say... Uh, a companion of fools become a fool. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to call somebody a fool, fool yeah. but the reality is, is that group is heading somewhere. Yeah. You're with that group. You're going to end up where they are. It is. It's going to end, end show up Show me your heart. friends and I'll show, show you your, your future. future. Um, so many people know that saying and it's very, very true. And even with my friends, only a few years back when you talk to them, they don't realize that. It's very interesting to see the flip side of the coin they don't realize most people don't realize that is actually what's happening and that's this is why the reason i love the bible saying a companion of fools suffers harm i used to thought when you're in a crowd of people going to a certain place if we're talking to younger guys maybe a party or even older guys i've seen some older folks throwing it at at gayers and so forth <laughs> um but sometimes you say but i didn't do what they did you didn't do what they did it's such a not taking responsibility in the first place. I, I was there, but I, I wasn't the guy doing that. Yeah, I was just there. It doesn't matter. The Bible says it so greatly. It says a companion of fools suffers harm. Imagine a grenade being in the middle of the room. Mm. We are at the sides. We're not touching it. We're not close to it. But if that thing goes off, the shrapnel will hit us and it will mm. cause us harm. And people forget that. You can... You can be at a place and say, but I'm not, I'm not doing what they're doing. But if you're constantly there and if you're constantly um, being in their vicinity, you're going to get habits yeah. that's going to form and that's the shrapnel. You're thinking, okay, cool, I'm not doing what they're doing, but you are forming habits, those bad habits what, what those guys or girls have, you are getting at the end of the day because yeah. you're, f you're constantly in there, how they talk, how they move, how they think. Uh, Andy Stanley said it so great. Um, the, 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 our lives moves in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Oh no, that was Greg Rochelle. Greg Rochelle said, our lives moves in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And, and who shapes your thoughts at the end of the day? Your friends. Your friends. What because you, you talk about the same yes. stuff you, and, and, you, and you start to think mm -hmm. the way that they do about things. Yeah, because obviously they will send you music, they will send you movies, they will send you content that's going through your phone, it's chats, it's and you form each other at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Um, and most of us, we feel comfortable around our friends, so you will be influenced by them. Yeah. Even if you say, no, I'm a strong leader, I'm a, mm. it doesn't matter. Even I get so influenced by my friends so quickly, it's not even funny. <laughs> and then afterwards, you're like, oh, wait, I'm talking like they 
are yeah. talking at this moment. Mm. Luckily, it's great friends, so it's not bad stuff at this moment happening, but that's how I realized how quickly it can happen. The shrapnel isn't things that is always, oh, I'm losing someone's life, or you're getting hurt, or so. mm. it's those habits is also, yeah. and people forget about that, those thinking patterns that forms in your mind. Mm. And so I think that the challenge is, because I'm thinking back to when my parents spoke to me about mm. picking my friends, yeah. is when you're in that space of the teenager, you, mm. you look at now. Yes. You don't look at six months from now, six no. years from now. And, and I think that's where we miss it when, when our parents talk to us about it, mm. because they look at us and they're raising, not a child, yes. they're raising an adult. Yeah. So they're looking at the influence that this person is getting mm. and what adult will that become. Yeah. And as, as a teenager in that moment, we're like, we're having fun. Yeah. This is great. I'm enjoying it. Nobody's we, getting we don't hurt. see the six years from now. Yeah. yeah. And we always give that, um, that, that, but nobody's getting hurt. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't matter if it's not wrong with it at per se, but is it wise? Is it at that moment wise for you to do it? But we as kids or young, or young people especially, we don't think about that moment. We, mm. we want the now. We, we see this is, is not harmful, but we don't think about that future and that's me included I'm 25 years old now there's many things in my life that I don't always think about a future but it's about the now and the then and you have to make it a habit in your life to create that thinking of the future yeah. no. you quoted Proverbs 13 yeah uh, another proverb that links in pretty well with that is Proverbs 27 17 that mm -hmm. says um, as iron sharpens iron, so yeah. one person sharpens another. Yeah. So there's also a flip side to it is that be careful. There's a negative influence that can come from yeah. your friends, but there's also a there's very, a positive influence that can come from your friends. A very positive influence of it. Uh, somebody once shared with me: if you look at your friends, your five best friends, mm. you're the average of your friends. Yeah. You reference Craig. Craig mm. spoken about that as well. Yeah. If you look at the quality of relationships that husbands have with their wives. Yeah. You're the average of those five friends of yours mm -hmm. in terms of that area of their life. Yeah. If you look at finances, you're the average of the five closest friends that you have. It's so true, yeah. Because you influence each other. Yeah, and, and that let's go back to that proverb. So I just want to pause and yeah, say, yeah. Bill Gates, if if you're listening to this <laughs> Can we have some coffee together? At some no, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that moment was actually great. We would like to be your friend <laughs> today. Um, yeah, the the iron sharpens iron. Also, the wise become wise. So let's say let's go to the companion of fools. That is that's what you become, and you don't even happen to do anything. Just being in the companionship of those people, your mind will transform. But it's amazing to say the other flip side is that's how the Bible warns us of that. That's how quickly it can happen that your habits change, your thinking process change. Your that's something that you become a fool. Let's say it like that. But when it becomes to the wise, if you walk, that's an action that you have to do. You walk with the wise to become wise. You have to put your time and effort in, because we as humans, we've got this animal nature. We want to do the now, the the immediate, the the problem of what we. The thing of, um, let's say, for instance, you're at a KF, people will influence you to do the stuff that they're doing at that moment. Um, we, we were making this huge joke because we just did bungee jumping at Blokerons. Yeah. And we, we referenced that thing your mom said, if your friends jump off a, off a bridge, will you? Okay. And I was like, yeah, I was the first one and my friends followed. So I'm probably not the best influence towards them. Um, but yeah, when you... If you <laughs> they followed uh, yeah, me. Yeah. I, I can see how difficult it was raising you. It was. your mom like, if your friend jumped, and you're like, yep, tick that one. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I tick that one off. <laughs> if they fall off, uh, jump off a roof, yes, we did. We jumped off the roof. Do you get set on fire? Yes, yeah. yeah we we that also did that. Um, oh, my mom, I, I love her to death. She's a really amazing mom. Um, and people didn't understand sometimes how she raised me. There was this one guy many years back I was into parkour I think I just started getting sponsored and the guy at church was like she's not a great mother for letting me do all these things and so forth and already at that time I was already making money off of my sport parkour free running um, but back in those days people didn't understand me climbing around doing flips and tricks 
And now all of a sudden it's in movies, it's in adverts, yeah. you're seeing everybody jumping around. In my testimony video, there was this great moment. What I said was, um, people always ask me, when did I start doing parkour or free running? And I was like, no, when did you stop? Because if you think about it, as kids, we always climbed around or jumping on couches and building forts and going crazy on trees maybe and so forth. But we eventually stop because yeah. we think that's not the most adult thing to do. But No, I, I stopped because my knees couldn't keep up. <laughs> I can, I can, I'm scared for that day. <laughs> I am probably scared for that day. Because I would love to do flips with my kids one day. I think yeah. it will be really great. It's like, Dad, Dad, come show you, show, show us. And they're all like seven, eight years old, me going boom, yeah. landing a flip at like 40, 50 years old. <laughs> it will be great. It will be magnificent. Yeah, great. Yeah. So in, in closing, what, what I'm just reminded of is something that, that happened to me. We mm. were, um, it's probably now about 19 years back, mm. had a good friend in my life, at that stage, uh, Peter mm. spoke about him in, in a message that I did recently. And we were in a, a group mm. that met weekly. And what was amazing about that relationship that developed was mm. that mutual respect. Yeah. And, and, and it's kind of, you, you, you don't think about it, but if, if you pick friends mm. that you see yourself would, that you would like to become. Yeah three, four years down the line. During that period, uh, Peter just made the remark one one evening when we were meeting for group and he said, you know what? I've listened to how you speak to Karen, my wife, yeah. at that stage, and she's still my wife. Yeah. Okay. In celebration. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said to me, I've, I've listened to how you speak to her and, and I think you can do it better. You can you can be more encouraging. You can mm. you can be more loving in, in how you speak to her. And because of the relationship, I took that to heart. Yeah. Instead of becoming defensive about it. Exactly. And it's changed how I, how I engage with with Karen, and mm. and that's helped me in my relationship. Yeah. And that's the kind of friends that we awesome. need. Yeah. And and we need to have in our life, because it's it's people that you allow to speak into your life yeah. and have that positive influence. Because we all have blind spots. Yeah. And you need the people that you trust that can speak into your life. And it's, and it's challenging because you don't know how the other person's going to take it. Yeah. But you need that input in order to grow and move forward. Yeah. And that is so true. And, I, and the, you said a very important thing there. It's about relationship, building relationship. I won't just meet a person off the street and tell them, hey, you need to fix your ears. I don't like how they look. Um, it's, a, it's a relationship build. And then you can come and say, Hey, I, the way you're speaking or the way how you act, maybe check this character flaw. Mm. I think let's talk about this. How can you fix it? Or even uh, it, uh, the reverse at the end of the day. You can go to your friend and say, hey, I have a porn addiction or if I cheated or um, I'm not using my money right. Can you help me with my finances? Yeah. And to go to a place and be like, I'm open about this. And that's why we need friends, that companionship. And now Jesus taught us that community is so great let's eat together i think that's yeah. the best uh, one of the coolest and greatest thing that jesus taught us let's eat together yeah. <laughs> always yeah because that's that's how you do life together yes. by eating together by eating together it's been so great having you guys with us talking about friends and my encouragement to you is be honest and and look at your friends that you have some of those friendships are negative influences mm -hmm. in your life it's not an easy thing but you need to reassess where you stand in terms of those relationships. Mm -hmm. And maybe there are relationships that you need to form. Mm -hmm. People that, that, are, that you know of, but you don't know that well, but it's people that, that you're looking up to. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you to lean in, in those relationships, press in, build strong relationships with those people, and, and, and kind of surround you with people that are moving in the same direction yeah. that you're moving in. Definitely. And Let's get a bit more serious for this moment. For everybody watching, um, there's a, an answer that you need to ask yourself honestly. And then when you answer it honestly, you need to obviously act on it at the end of the day. And with your friends and everybody in mind, um, ask yourself this really deep question. You're going to have to sit alone and really think about it. It sounds harsh, but maybe you're the toxic person as well. And that is a hard and big pill to swallow. But it's a place that you need to go with Christ and go sit and think, okay, cool, 
Maybe there's something that I need to fix and work on at the end of the day. Maybe I'm picking the wrong friends because it's not them, it's maybe me. And that's also the flip side to it. Um, it's a hard one, but it's a great journey to walk, to take responsibility of your life and surround yourself with people that has good and great influence. Awesome. Johan, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. It's so glad to be here. It's great that I'm actually here and not over Zoom. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it, awesome. it makes a big difference. So it thanks a lot for being here. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Our final sponsor for this episode is Pumpkin Pumba. They are home-based business from Summer Strand in PE. Di Clark, the owner, started the business 10 years ago. And she's continued to produce high-quality products. If you're looking for a toiletry bag, a makeup bag, a book bag, a pencil bag, or even a peg bag, look no further than Pumpkin Pumba. They make an endless range of bags and all the products are covered in a clear PVC and have a high quality waterproof lining on the inside. You can find the products in the Happiness Shop or uh, at Life with Jacqueline and both shops are based in Port Elizabeth. And a great tip, they are actually made from pumpkins. Uh, that's no, completely not true. <laughs> <laughs> so check out Pumpkin Pumba <laughs> and not what Johanna said to have a look at. But for the rest of the episode, listen to what Johanna said. <laughs> yeah, Yo, just scratch that part. Just close your eyes. That never happened. Cool. Thank you very much. Though. Thanks, Johan. And have a great week. God bless.